Hey everybody, we are back with another edition of the Falcons Audible presented by AT&T. Yes, that's right. We are back. That means it is football season time. It is training camp has officially opened up. We are, call it, 50 to 100 yards away from all the guys filing into the complex here and they are ready to strap on the pads or Actually, they don't strap on the pads oh, yeah. much anymore, do they? Yeah. <laughs> Not as much as we used to. <laughs> anyway, we'll get into all that. Thanks so much for joining us again. We had to take a little bit of a break because there wasn't really much football <laughs> going on, but now there is. So here is the quick agenda for today, what we're going to be covering, and then I will open it up to my fellas. What we are most excited to see about this training camp. Sometimes training camp is just kind of another one of those things, but this year is, is a lot more important for Atlanta because there are so many different position battles for this team to take the next step the quarterback speaking of position battles big one here Matt Ryan has been the the fixture at this position for this organization for so long he's obviously moved on so we've got to have a new face of the franchise if you will how about the importance of veterans as I talked about Matt Ryan is gone so who is going to fill the void which veterans are going to step up and help lead this team of primarily younger players and then finally I'll have the guys talk about some of their favorite training camp memories because mm. training camp has changed a whole lot in the oh, last yeah. What do we call it? 25, 30 years, Dave? Oh, yeah. um, so we're going to talk about some of our, I know there's, there's kind of a delta. It's kind of a delta here in years, right? All right. In case you forgot, I'm Derek Rackley. This is Dave Archer and DJ Shockley, three former Falcons here. And we're going to talk about all things Falcons. So Dave, I'm going to start with you. Just quick reactions. As we open up training camp, what are some of the things, doesn't have to be a position battle, just what are you most excited to see this training camp out of the Atlanta Falcons? Well, first of all, it's just football's back, right, guys? Yeah, That's the number one thing. I guess that's the number one excitement level. But number two for me, very, very close number two, would all be all the influx of a bunch of young guys that I have a, think to have a chance to make a difference, both on the offensive and defensive side. So I think the excitement of the new flux of guys in, and maybe some are old or maybe some of them are, yep. are young, but those new guys coming and changing the face of the team. Yeah, definitely a, a lot of new talent in, in the building and competing out on the field and looking to earn a position and help this team take the next step. DJ, what about you? What are you most excited to see this training camp? You know, I, I'd be remiss to say the same thing that Arch mentioned about just football being back. I mean, it's the number one sport. Everybody loves to watch it. Everybody looks forward to turning on your TV and watching. It's going to be so many fans out here at camp. I mean, just – when you walk out, you smell it. You know, you know how camp is when you first walk out, you smell that grass, that dew. Uh, the fans are good to see them to come out here. So I'm glad football's back. But for me, I think a close second would be our year two guys. I want to see how big mm -hmm. of a jump the year two guys. Good. We saw Pitts last year, yep. you know, make a jump. How big of a jump can he be? You know, I mean, you know, guys like Richie Grant, Mayfield, I mean, Darby, you know, we didn't see much of him last year. Can some of those guys have a huge impact on this team going into, you know, this new season and how much of an impact they'll make? That's a great point because generally first-year players, we were all there at one time. There's so many things going on, right? Yeah. You yeah. think you got it figured out when you're in college, when you're at University of Georgia and you're the <laughs> BMOC, the big man on campus, but then you come to the NFL and they start throwing all this playbook at you especially you two guys as quarterbacks. And then not only the playbook, but then you got to go do it out on the field. And these guys are flying around the fastest guys you've ever seen in your athletic career. Yeah. So things start to slow down a little bit, or at least you hope so yeah. in year two. So it's a great point. You know what? I talked a little bit about Matt Ryan and we're going to talk about the veterans later on in this podcast. But if you go around the NFL guys, you can generally take a pick and find one guy. That's the face of your franchise, right? And Matt Ryan has been that guy mm. basically ever since he put on this jersey. True. He's no longer here. So who is the face of the franchise? Mm. That's kind of what I'm excited to see. Who is ready to step up and say, maybe it's not a quarterback, maybe it is a quarterback, but say, I'm going to be the leader of this team. I'm going to put guys on my back, and I'm going to show them the way that it needs to be done on the football field, and I'm going to help turn this, this organization around and get us back into the playoffs, Good get call. us competing for Super Bowls. But it's going to take – that's, that's one unique personality, mm -hmm. as you guys know, to, to come into an NFL locker room and say, guys, get on my shoulders. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I like that. So I'm interested to see who that guy's going to be. Maybe it's not one. Maybe it's two or three guys, but Matt Ryan was that guy, and he's no longer here. So let's kind of dive into it. Obviously, we talked about the roster has turned over. It's a new season. There's a lot of new faces. What should we expect? I'm gonna, DJ, I'm going to start to you. What should we expect to learn in this training camp during – specific position groups, right? Which position battles are you excited to see here in this training camp? You know, when you're bringing it up, the first thing that comes to mind is we talked about both guys, you guys mentioned the, the different faces that's going to be a part of this team. 
And when I think about the different faces, I say, okay, what is their role going to be? Who are the guys you're going to be able to depend on? I think you'll learn that throughout training camp. Who are those guys going to be and what their roles are? I mean, you think about a guy like Lorenzo Carter coming in here. What kind of role is he going to have? You think about Casey Hayward in that backside. How is he going to help that young secondary that you just talked about? Are just so many guys, I think, you're going to wonder who's going to be the guy on the outside who's going to get to the quarterback. We saw Ade last year kind of emerge late in the year and be a guy that can really get to the quarterback. Who's going to be those guys in those certain roles, in those certain positions that you can know you can depend on week in and week out? And I think you'll have a better idea once training camp goes on and we see what happens when you have all these inter-squad practices and all this kind of stuff, which one of those guys are going to emerge and how those guys help those certain position groups become better. Dave, the last time that we did a podcast, it was basically a summary about the draft. And we talked a lot about the needs for Atlanta going into it. And things that popped up were edge rusher, obviously wide receiver. We talked a little bit about offensive line. But now that we've seen all these players added to the roster in various ways, shapes, or forms, which position group are you the most interested in seeing? Well, we've got to make a dramatic improvement along the offensive line. Now, does that mean just we get into year two for a guy like Mayfield where he steps into year two and he becomes a better player, or does he get pushed? Does Schaefer come in and take his job? What's happening at center? Two guys, young mm-hmm. guys in Dahlman uh, and Hennessy going head-to-head, head. and then that right tackle position, is McGarry and Trench there, or is is uh, Muhammad be able to step in? Is it Jermaine Effetti going to be mm-hmm. able to step in so a tremendous amount of I think upgraded um, competition mm-hmm. along the offensive line has a chance to to make some plays like news that came down where uh, Deion Jones was going to start the season on the pop list does that usher in a guy I think is going to be a baller in Anderson the linebacker from Montana State people mm-hmm. saying oh he played at a little school dude can do it all he's six foot three 245 pounds runs four four he's a tackling machine does that usher him in quicker and have him next to Evans as linebacker inside? And does that give the Atlanta ability to maybe do something with Deion Jones? That's still kind of up in the air as well, but he starts on the pup list. Those are a couple areas, offensive line, and then that second level of defensive line. And a lot of people are talking mm-hmm. about the D-line and rushers, rightly so. But what's going on in that second level? Because we've had a guy in Deion Jones and a guy named Foye Luokan who are tackling machines yep. back there. Yep. They're mm-hmm. gone. Yeah. yeah, Who's playing there? Yep. Yeah, great point. Great point. You you, you talked about a line and, and guys, when we were kind of getting ready for some of the draft stuff, I know you guys liked ed, edge rusher a lot more, defensive back even. I was the one that was kind of pounding the pavement on offensive line. Yeah. And Dave, I'm going to kind of piggyback on what you said. It was interesting that you pointed out center because I literally just thought about this. Think about kind of the last, I don't want to, 15 years or so, you basically had Todd McClure who held that position down for so many years, Mm -hmm. right? And then you essentially went from McClure to Alex Mack, Mm -hmm. right? So you had two guys that knew how to coordinate the offensive line and they did it without a hitch, right? And so now you don't have either of those guys. You have young players and sometimes it takes a long time for kind of what I was talking about. Those guys to feel comfortable saying, I got this, I'm going to make the rip Liz call. I'm mm. going to make the Ringo lucky call, whatever it is. I'm going to make sure that my right guard and right tackle know who they're combo blocking up to the next level. That's a huge position that needs to be figured out. And one of those guys has to take the reins and say, I'm going to do this. I'm going to be the leader of the offensive line. Cause you start looking at the numbers. Rushing was not good last year. Mm. I think they were like 26th in the league in rushing last yeah. year, gave up 40 sacks. Essentially that's two and a half sacks a game. And I would also add that having a savvy veteran quarterback in Matt Ryan probably eluded some more of sacks that could have added onto that total. He threw a lot of balls away that probably could have turned out yeah. to being sacks. Yeah. So let's use that as a segue to the next conversation because we didn't really dive into quarterbacks yet, and I got two of them here, guys. And it's arguably nationally one of the biggest position battles for this franchise. So Dave, I want you to break it down, what you're looking for out of Marcus Mariota and Desmond Ritter and what you think might end up playing out over the next, call it four or five weeks. How quickly can they do what you've talked about? I'm not talking about being the face of the team, but certainly a lightning rod that becomes that leadership quality that's innate with quarterbacks. You have to have some of that in you. Not saying you have to be the exclusive leader. And Matt Ryan was not a guy that was a rah-rah guy on the field. Now, he would chew your rear end during a game. We saw it. Chuck and I both saw it. You saw it play out in games. But he wasn't necessarily that guy that was pounding people on the back. So leading by example, I think those are the first two things that I – the first thing I need to see from both those Mm -hmm. guys that are going to play Ritter and Mariota. The second part of it is I think the part that I think a lot of fans are excited about 
is the fact that these guys can extend plays. Yeah, buddy. You're talking about tremendous athletes at the college level and, and Mariota at the professional level to be able to extend and maybe that's not a throwaway anymore. And now you're second and 10. Maybe it's he scrambles out and gets five. Now it's second and five on a broken play. I think that's what I'm looking for from them as well. Obviously absorb the offense, be that leader, but then make those off key plays, those off uh, those impromptu type plays that maybe extend a drive, do something for you that's going to be positive on offense. I'll add one thing to what Arch is talking about. Today was the official first day where players arrived. Uh, a couple of players got a chance to talk to the media, and one guy talked today was Chris Lindstrom. And I asked that kind of specific question about those two guys. And the first thing he said was the leadership part of it, but he said the command that both those guys had when they both walked into the huddle, the command they had at the line of scrimmage. He said it took a couple of days for us to kind of understand the cadence of both guys and all that kind of stuff. But he said both guys commanded the line of scrimmage, commanded the huddle, so we knew we were good. Yeah. And for me, when you hear that from an offensive lineman, that gives the confidence that, okay, we got guys back there that can handle the big show, that can handle running this team. And the first thing I already mentioned was the leadership part of being able to come in here and galvanize guys to come together. And both those guys can do that. We know Ritter did it in college, proven winner. We know what, 46, 47 wins, something crazy like that. And Mariota's looking to do the same thing. I mean, he's a you know a top pick, so the guy did big things at Oregon. I mean, you, you know both these guys are made the right way. But hearing Chris Lindstrom say through OTAs, through minicamp, we saw the command. We saw the leadership. So we know going into this training camp, we know we got in those two guys. You guys know it. Like, you got to own it. You got to own the yeah. huddle. You got to own the line of scrimmage. Sure. And, and everybody around you will know it, not only the players, but the coaches during practice that are standing nine to ten yards away with their scripts in their hand. They're also going to know whether or not, like, oh, okay, yeah. this kid looks like he's ready. And I, I hate to – I don't want to discount Mariota because it seems like everything you read says that Mariota should have the upper hand because of his experience in the league. He's got the experience upper hand, right? I can't help but think about a comparison with Desmond Ritter to Russell Wilson. And yes, that might be a little the high praise, right? But Russell Wilson was doubted when he was in college, right? Yeah, he's too small. I don't know if he's going to translate into a, a baseball pro. player. Yeah, baseball mm -hmm. player. Is yeah. he really locked in? Right. And what did he do? He came into the league and he commanded the huddle and commanded the line of scrimmage. And there was no question that he was going to be the starter when he came into the league. Now, I'm not saying that's going to happen with Desmond Ritter, but Probably a lot of the same things. Ah, didn't play at a big-time Power 5 school. Mm -hmm. Always had to be a workhorse guy. Well, he was. Yeah. And guess what? All he did was win. Yeah. Right. All they did was win. So he's used to having like the odds stacked against him, right? So maybe that plays into his favor as he comes into the Falcons organization. And like you said, DJ, he owns the huddle. Yeah. He owns the line of scrimmage. But it's going to be fascinating to see how this one plays comparison, out. comparison, though, uh, Rack, I think it's a good one, too. Who would we talk about as some of the better deep ball passers in the National Football League? Russell Wilson's One in the, the top best. five. Mm -hmm. yeah, he may sure. be the best deep ball passer yeah. in the game. On the money, on the move, whatever he needs. Ritter comes in with that ability to throw the ball down the field. One of the things they're talking about is Ritter's ability to stretch the field and throw the ball down the field with accuracy. Mm -hmm. Interesting comparison. Yeah, I mean, just guys that were doubted, guys that can get outside the pocket. I know that's what Arthur Smith wants to do this year, use the running game and then get some bootlegs out on the edge. These guys can do it. So it's only time will tell. We'll <laughs> see what happens on the field. This episode in part brought to you by The Home Depot. Everything you need for your next home improvement project is just a tap away on The Home Depot app. The Home Depot app digital toolbox gives you access to how-to guides, project calculators, and image search so you'll know exactly what you need to pick up. With the tap of the finger, you can rent and reserve the right tools for the job. Also, browse through millions of items from top brands that you can have delivered right to your door. Whatever your project, find exactly what you need with the Home Depot app. Download the Home Depot app today. So we're going to switch gears a little bit. We talked about some of the younger players, the Desmond Ritters of the world. How about veterans? Because we, we did talk a lot about a guy like a Matt Ryan or some of the others in the organization. Dave, tell me how important it is this training camp specifically for some of the older players on the team to step up and not necessarily be that guy that I was talking about earlier, but being that leader to show guys what it takes to be a pro, what they have to do outside of their time in the building, watching tape amongst each other, 
what they need to do when they go home at night. All those little things. How can the veterans help advance this team? Yeah, the poster child for that, we all know what his name is. His name's Grady Jarrett. You know, the way Grady comes to work, how much he works during on a Tuesday or a Wednesday or a Thursday, uh, he's trying to get himself in that position to where when he plays on Thursday, it's getting him ready for Sunday. Certainly transmitting some of those ideas. I've characterized some of these guys. You talked about Carter coming, Lorenzo Carter coming in, Casey Hayward coming in. Some of these veteran players that are coming in, Marcus Mariota, with a uh, kind of a reboot on their career. Okay, and not older guys. Rashad Evans. This is mm -hmm. a guy that was drafted just a few years ago at number one draft pick. Mm -hmm. uh, Carter, number one draft pick, and for whatever reason, it didn't work out for those guys. Yep. yep. So they come in with that chip on the shoulder, and I think a little bit of an edge. At least I'm hoping sure. that that's something yeah. they come in with. Does that edge perpetuate itself into a want to that the younger players are watching saying, dude, look at this dude preparing. Yeah. That's the level we have to get to. That's what they're going to need to do, uh, Rack. I think, I think you can't hope that that happens. Yep. That has to happen. Grady can carry some of the load, and Dion's going to be on the sideline. So how much can you get from there? I think Cordero Patterson loves being Atlanta. We saw it yep. all offseason. They got yep. him re-signed. Jake Matthews is a guy that's mm. going to have to command respect mm. along the offensive line and demand that those five guys that step on the field with him and Chris Lindstrom or the other three guys that they play at a high level. But yeah, I think I don't think that you hope these guys can do it. They have to do it, and I'm hoping the chip on the shoulder thing helps some of the new guys. Yeah, because it may not be a guy that's been in the league nine or ten years. It might be the guy that's been three or four, hasn't quite lived up to his expectations, and yes, the change of scenery is what allows him to kind of break out a little bit. Dave mentioned three or four names. Any of those ones the guys on your list, or do you have somebody else? You know what? Those are all guys that, that come to mind for sure. I mean, I, I think when you think about the pillars or how we even started out talking about we need guys who can be the face of this organization. And those are guys that you feel like can be, especially 9-7 is one of those guys that you see out in front. I mean, I, I see Grady on, on social media all the time, and it's, and it's a regular day. He just finished maybe leaving the facility. I know it, but he's working out. He's showing the video of him doing it the accountability part of the action. Like, a lot of guys can talk it. Like, I played with a guy named Matt Shaw who played, you know, tons of years in the league. Wasn't a raw, raw guy. Wasn't a guy who, you know, you know Shabby. I mean, wasn't mm -hmm. very outspoken. Both of you guys know him very well. But the guy did it every single day. So that's how I knew how to prepare. I saw the things that he did on a daily basis. And you got to have guys inside the locker room who can do that. And I think – 9-7 is one of those guys, whether you're on offense or defense, that you see him work, you say, this is the kind of guy that I want to follow and be yeah. like. And he, I think, is number one when you think about a guy on this football team that when training camp starts, there are going to be eyes watching him on how he goes every single day, and that's going to dictate where this team goes. I'll you know, tell you one yeah. other guy, Rack, that I think that we probably should mention is Eric Harris. I yeah. think Eric Harris yeah. is one of those guys that when he walks in a room just kind of commands – the respect he's played at a high level in the league. Uh, he played well here at times a year ago as he came in as a first year safety here. Um, and I think that the, the guys, Richie Grant and Jalen Hawkins have a tremendous amount of respect for him. Mm -hmm. At some point you expect those two guys to be on the field and maybe he's not, but from a leadership standpoint, I think Eric Harris needs to be mentioned as well. Yeah. And I think a lot of people that are listening to this podcast, they want to hear the names on the roster right now. They want to hear the guys that we think have a chance to step up. But I also think it's a good idea sometimes that us three step back and talk about who was that for us mm -hmm. when we played? Mm -hmm. Because DJ, you and I got to share a little bit of time together and I'll just start this one. I'll tell you that when I came into the league in 2000, I understand that was a long time ago for many of you guys, <laughs> Dave, we won't, we won't, we won't get to yours yet. <laughs> But, really say that? but I will tell you <laughs> that the guys that were on the roster when I came in were guys like Jesse Tuggle, sure. right? And you Good think one. about him, Good ring one. of honor, right? Yeah. And I came in and I didn't know a ton about him, but I knew that I used him in Tech Bowl because he was <laughs> legit in Tech Bowl. And again, so many people are like, what is Tech Bowl? Anyway, old school video game, yeah. okay? But I came in with guys like him, like Terrence Mathis, yeah. guys like Bob Whitfield, mm. Chris Chandler, Those were the veterans Bob on Christian. The team at the time, Those right? were the veterans okay. that I came in with. <laughs> And those Jesse were, Tuggle was a rookie my third year in the league. That's why I brought Jesse. <laughs> we're going to get to you, Dave. Hold on. We're going to get to you. Those are the guys that helped me learn what it took to be a pro because those were guys that I saw on TV. Yeah. Those were guys that I saw in uniform succeeding, doing great things. And I said, 
Those are the guys that I need to model my early career after. What are they doing to yeah. get ahead? What are they doing to be successful of, as pros? You mentioned Matt Schaub. Who else was it for you, DJ? Man, I, I remember Warwick Dunn when he was here. I mean, some of the things that he did in practice, some of the things he did to get himself ready, and you looked at him and you said, there's no way this guy's been in the NFL this long. Yeah. And you're like, this is like a regular guy, but Warwick was one of the toughest guys you'd be around. Another guy who uh, I remember one, one – uh, I'll say his name first, then I'll tell a, a quick story. My man, Lawyer Malloy. Yeah. I'm talking mm. about when the he came dog. here. Oh, man. Law Dog was all business. Yeah. And he was coming with a chip on his shoulder like yeah. a lot of guys, uh, were, you know, coming from different places. And I remember, I can't remember what I, th I think Mike went down or Shabby. Somebody went down, and I was next in line. I'm literally sitting on the bench, like, you know, talking to one of the quarterbacks coach. Uh, and uh, Law Dog comes walking by, and I'm talking about the look on his face. It was like, you better be ready. If your name is called, you better be ready because you next in line. And I was sitting there like, man, this man act like I got to feed his family right now. But it was so much. It was much, that important But the him. intensity, exactly yeah. Right. Yes. That's the, what you want. The way he was in practice and in games, he is one guy that you looked at, oh, man, this is a true leader for us, a guy who you know you better come with it every single day or he going to let you know. He going to keep yeah. you accountable. Yeah. And that's who Law Dog was. That's no great. question about it. Dave, I know you've been waiting. Well, I mean, I'm going to mention <laughs> names that people men f men remember from long ago. Jesse Tuggle came in, I think, my third year in the league. He was a rookie yeah. uh, out of Valdosta State. Nobody knew who anything knew anything about the guy. And the yep. next thing you know, he becomes the all-time leading tackler in Falcon history and was a, d a dominating player at the linebacker spot, undersized as yep. well. Yep. Um, on the defensive side, Buddy Curry was a big-time oh, player, yeah. oh, leading yeah. tackler for seven straight seasons. Yeah. Bobby Butler, an outstanding corner yeah. that we had at a Florida State, mm -hmm. who was a former number one draft pick. Yeah. Yeah. But I'd have to look to the offensive side, and I'm talking about Ring of Honor guys now. I'm talking about Mike Kinn, mm -hmm. uh, left tackle. I'm talking about the center, Jeff Van Note. Mm. I mean, those are guys yeah, that, that ring are in Pillars. the Ring of Honor. Billy yeah. White Shoes Johnson, yeah. our punt returner and, and leading receiver uh, a couple of seasons while I was here. So those are name names because they're on wow. pillars exactly. that are at the stadium. Exactly. And but uh, I remember Jeff Van Note. I walked up to Coach. Or I, I said, Coach. I walked up to Van Note and I said, Mr. Van Note. When I was a rookie, I said, Mr. <laughs> Van Note, what do we wear on road trips? He said, casual with class, kid, casual with class. And he turned around and walked out. I said, wow. It's like pearls of wisdom dropping out of and casual then, with class. And then I could just casual imagine you going class. home and being like, oh, my gosh. I got no casual, casual with class. class. So, <laughs> so I got, where's my is best this Don Johnson what is this? Miami Vice? Gonna, is that, ca is that class? No, classic stuff. No, those guys were, were big-time players, and obviously they've been enshrined in our ring of honor at, yeah. in the stadium. Yeah, and who knows? Maybe some of these guys that are on yeah. this current roster will end up you know, kind of holding that position and getting into the ring of, ring of honor themselves one day. All right, so we, we kind of took a little trip back down memory lane. Let's get refocused. Not to get refocused because that's a blast. <laughs> Guys are starting training camp, okay? Yeah. Let's do one more little story here before we go. And I'm going to come right back to you, Dave. Okay. Training camp. So <laughs> give us one or two of your favorite training camp memories. It could be something that happened on the field. It could be something that happened in the dorms. It could be – Something that happened outside of it. Maybe you decided to tell coaches you were sick at practice and you went play golf. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. What kind of memories team. do you have? <laughs> yeah. No, there's there's so many so many memories that that flood back for me. I think the thing that I remembered the most uh, that sticks out in my mind. I've told this story a lot. When I arrived here my rookie year, we did 17 straight two a days in That's full pads. That's stupid. Pass. What? 17 what straight days in two oh my two a days in full yeah. pads. My roommate was Scott Case, who was Who's a former Oklahoma Sooner, uh, intercepted 10 passes in one season as yep. a Falcon. They could yep. still 25. the all-time record. Uh, yeah, he could knock your jock in the dirt, and he would get up and <laughs> laugh about it and talk to you and all that kind of stuff. He comes into training camp the following year. He's about 185, fit. We worked out all year long together. We were ready to go. He comes in ready to roll. Three days into camp, he's packed in ice with IVs in both arms and weighs 169. <laughs> I mean, we're you yeah, guys know you drink yeah. water, you drink water, you drink water. You can't, you can't eat. You're still sweating it when you're at lunch. <laughs> yeah. The sweat's still pouring off. You lose like yeah. two pounds at lunch. Yeah. Lose eight at practice, two at lunch. <laughs> yeah. Come back out, lose ten more in the afternoon. Because oh, practice was at two o'clock. Yeah. Thankfully, 
for these guys, I guess, they're much smarter now than they used to be. I think they even smartened up when you guys right, got in the league right. as well. But we got I, to I'll, a, I'll never forget that. I mean, there's so many others. And we'll visit throughout the yeah. year here on Falcons yeah. Audible, <laughs> tell a few stories and stuff about all of us that we have because oh, there's a ton of them we all have. But that's one that stuck. I forgot what day it was. Yeah. I was writing, and this is no cell phones now, writing to my girlfriend. I'd write a letter to her back at Iowa yeah. State. What is that? Yeah, yeah you know, I know. I know. You don't you, stamp you did, it, <laughs> Right. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe racked it. You did. So, so writing her a letter, and I couldn't remember what day it was. Oh, <laughs> 17 man. straight days in two, yeah. a pad. Yeah. two two a day in full pads. I thought, wow, I really want to do this? Yeah. And it turned out okay. Yeah. DJ, how about you, man? Oh, man. So I had a couple of roommates. My man, Jairus Norwood, you guys know. Yep. And J-Rock. Adam Jennings, who we used to call Angry Man. Yeah. And – for people who don't know, each and every day there's a different install. There's a different something you gotta, you know, get ready for the next day. Yep. So we've had one day of practice. Now you go back to your room, and now we're like, okay, let's get ready to, you know, get ready for the next day. Let's look at tomorrow's install. Let's start looking at it. So I'm in my room looking at it. All I know is here comes J Rock. Everybody knows if you know J Rock, he's from Mississippi. He come, hey man, hey man, if we get in uh <laughs> double and, and we got this two jet, where I go? Okay, we talk about it, we go through it, he go back to his room. Come back again. Hey man, uh I'm like, bro, <laughs> I'm trying to learn it too. But he looked at me like, you the QB, you already yeah, you know this. Get me so, thing. so this went on for like 15, 20 minutes of the entire install. It was every other minute, like, okay, so what if you know we get in this set, we get in this formation, and I run this. I say, J Rock, come on, man. You gotta, <laughs> you gotta, you gotta give me some time. But it was like every other minute he was coming up hey, asking man. me a different. Hey man, look, look, man, look, look. I'm telling Shaw, I need to know. I need to know. I can't get in there and not know what's going on. J Rock, I got you. I got you. So I remember days like that. Well, it was every day of so I actually learned had to learn the playbook twice because taught it to myself, then I had to teach it to my man J Rock. <laughs> Gosh, you know, it's it, you think back at so many things, guys, and it's like I think when I when I saw this topic, I was like, man, what about the rookie shows that we used to? Oh, I mean, I remember oh, watching yeah. Shock through the rookie shows when Shock. when I was a veteran I at got the up time. Saying that Usher, Arch. yeah, you you seven Usher. o'clock. So ro- rookie shows, just so you yeah, know, yeah. is where you, the, the rookies <laughs> put on a show for the veterans, and they can either imitate somebody on the team or coaches to get laughs or if you have a talent like a true talent you can perform that talent and rack this is the most that was the most nervous i ever been oh, in here's my the life. problem if in you have life. a talent you better be good right because you got what <laughs> 70 guys in there that will clown you up and oh. down and then if, if you don't do good. it good guess what you got to come back and do it again because you got to get it back. You got to get it right. So. so I think about the rookie shows. I think about all the things. But you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave it with this. When I walked in the building today here, there are two large ice makers Ugh. and like six or seven like horse troughs sitting out front. <laughs> and I own a gym, right? And so everybody will come up to me as the former football player. What do you do when you're really sore? Like. So I was telling them, this is what I used to do. Everybody Not hates. necessarily recommending it for you, but you need to find the biggest trash can that you can find, fill it up with ice and water, and sit in it. And they're like, oh my gosh, that sounds awful. <laughs> like, is that not painful? Yeah. I'm like, it's called yeah. survival. <laughs> it's like the best thing. Right? And it is painful. Oh, you're right. It's painful, but, but you tell, feel so good. Tell them this. After one of those uh, two-a-day practices, oh. Dave, does it not just feel divine? It oh. was uh, when you got out. Now, when you got in the tub, and we, remember we were kept trying to find the little footies. Or something oh, to put yeah. On your toes, put on your toe in the toes. front of the top here. Yeah. But when you First get two in, minutes are terrible. It's going to be about a minute and a half, two yes. minutes. You're going to have to gut it out. You're <laughs> yes. But when you go to Nirvana, which is every <laughs> <laughs> When you oh, get you know, out, you feel when you get out, it's like they cut off your lower half and sewed a new one on. You yes. walk in and go, "Wow, I <laughs> got a lot of spring in my step." So anyway, uh, again, I'm not giving medical advice. I'm not <laughs> recommending anything. I'm just telling you what used to work for us. I got, I got one more last training camp uh, story, and I want Dave to kind of uh, to back me up on this one. And people may not want to hear it, but it's part of training camp between quarterbacks and centers, <laughs> as you know. Centers and offensive linemen are pretty big guys, right? Mm-hmm. And you get through halfway through a practice, and these guys are leaking. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. That's, Tell, that's a good word. <laughs> leaking. It's not <laughs> just sweating. No. Arch, no. how bad did the top of your hand smell from 
I'm just saying. People want to hear real training camp stories. We're going to keep it 100. We're going to keep it 100. That is a real memory from training camp. Me in the shower scrubbing the top of my hand and coming out, and it still, still ain't right. Still ain't right. That's that's no lie. Uh, I'll take it one step further. Here we go. Let's go. <laughs> Our young center was on the wedge in the first preseason game. Uh, yep. Guy comes down. They have this huge collision. Yep. Kids, his name a good player, right? Gets blasted in that huge collision. He gets back in the huddle, come out of the puddle, break the huddle, and you think, damn, what is that smell? <laughs> <laughs> My man had no, done it didn't. all in his pants. No, he didn't. <laughs> and you got to take a step. We're not in the shotgun now. You no. got to slide up underneath this there. We're going to get a delay school. again. <laughs> I thought about taking a delay a game right there. Coach, <laughs> I can't do this. First play of the game. First uh, play of the game. I thought about taking a delay a game. No. But they got him over the sidelines. You know, there's no running back to the locker room. Yeah. They're holding ain't no towels tent. up. Ain't no got his pants down. They're trying to clean this guy. Oh, no. Just one of the clean parts of the league. Gary. That's what go. happens in training camp, people. That's all. There Something happens. Just when you think you've heard everything. <laughs> <laughs> So let's leave it there because oh, there might man. be some people that are getting a little queasy. But, yes, uh, it's not always all glitz and glamour in the oh, NFL, man. ladies and gentlemen. Uh, you know what? That's going to do it for today. I, I don't want to open <laughs> these guys up too much because it, we might need to change the stories, rating baby. on the I'm podcast. My hand over here right now. Uh, thanks so much for joining us. As uh, our uh, producer here, Sam, mentioned, football season is back upon we us, back, which means baby. we're going to be back. We're back. And we're going to do back. this a whole lot more moving forward. Appreciate you guys joining us here on the Falcons Audible presented by AT&T. Hope you enjoyed the stories. Hope you enjoyed the information and the knowledge. And you, you know where to come back to get more from us right here on the Falcons Audible. Take care, everyone.